Mr. Speaker, the Rouleau Commission has learned that even before the truck convoy came to Ottawa, the government was planning to insult the occupants in an effort to scorn them. Text messages between Liberal employees reveal that this was strategic. They wanted to give interviews about the extreme elements of the convoy to make them look bad, and they even thought it would bring out the crazies, they said. Two days later, the Prime Minister insulted the convoy, and the police confirmed that this fueled the crisis. And I heard your evidence or read your evidence about misinformation, and it's fair to say that on social media in particularly, and even in the news, there was a whole bunch of misinformation about the protesters. Is that fair? About everything that about had everything. to do with it. Yes. Right. So, for example, there was reports in the news that there was an arson committed by the protesters, and I understand that was investigated, and it turned out that wasn't true. Yes, sir. And uh, there Sorry, was, I, yeah. the post, the, the investigation was concluded after I left office. Yes. My yes, sir, is what I understood to be in the media, but not from the actual investigators themselves. Okay. And with the misinformation, did you have any idea about how the misinformation about the protests started? Did you do any analysis with your intelligence bureau on that? <coughs> no, sir. Okay. Not I wanna, well, not that I'm aware of. They may have made such attempts, but I wasn't aware. All right. So I want to bring up a document. I gave notice of this earlier um, today, and I don't know if the feds are going to object, but I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, if, if I could bring up document uh, ssm.can.00007762, underscore rel.0001. All right, so what this is, sir, this is a text message from a fellow by the name of Alexander Cohen. Are you familiar with him? It doesn't ring a bell, sir. Okay. He's with, the pro he's with uh, Minister Marciano's office, uh, Minister of Public Safety, and it's between him and Mary Liz Power. Are you familiar with Mary Liz Power? Again, the, the names aren't ringing a bell. Okay. She's with the uh, Prime Minister's office. So I'm just going to read that to you for you so you have an understanding. And this is from about the 24th, on or before the 24th of January. And it says, I got a quick response. People are into it. Let me know if your boss is too. Happy to help however I can. This is what I sent through though, by the way. Hi, I just had a chat with Alex at PS, meaning public safety, who had a bit of an interesting idea. As you saw in the pod goals chat, the truckers convoy and some of their more extreme comments in brackets, i.e. calling for a January 6th style insurrection, close brackets, are getting more coverage in the media. Alex was surveying whether there'd be interest in his boss doing some media on this eventually. He was chatting with uh, Mediciano about it right before he went into the cabinet retreat. Now I can tell you the cabinet retreat was on the 24th. That's how I know it was before the 24th. I think there could be an opportunity to get in on this growing narrative of the truckers, particularly with the research that LRB is doing into their backers. My thoughts of the framing here would be similar to what PM slash Blair, meaning the prime minister and uh, minister Blair said last year when January 6 occurred. And the first thing is, our democracy is something we need to nurture and protect every day. Now, that text message then continues, and I, I'd ask uh, Mr. Clark if you could bring up ssm.can.0000-7722 underscore rel.0001. Council, I think that's the current document we're on. Um, sorry, uh, 2716. Nope, I apologize. <laughs> Hold on. Well, I've got the name of it wrong, I think. I got the wrong number. I emailed it to you earlier, if you could open it up. It's uh, text message two. It just says text two. Mm -hmm. 
I have um, a text to pbcan000.1527 underscore route. We can see if that works. I'll let you know if it's the right one. It looks to be a text from someone named uh, Pam. No, it's not. I can forward it to you again here. I just sent it. I think that's I think that's why it's good to have these things done in advance and not last minute. True. Mr. Clerk, it's uh, Eric Brousseau. I, I think I've, I've opened the document that my friend, uh, I think, sent you, and I think it's 7724 would be the second um, text message that he's trying to refer to. All right, so this is the continuation, and it's what sort of the, the lines are going to be. And we will always support the right to peaceful protest. Some of the call that organizers of these events are making are concerning, and we're taking them seriously in brackets. We'd need something to back this up, close brackets. We'll continue to monitor the situation closely. The fine line to walk would be to ensure we are not looking like we're directing the police, which obviously is not the goal here. Hoping to canvas your thoughts. Alex said uh, he'd come back to me with a proposal this afternoon when he gets to chat with Ndiciano again, and obviously, pending his boss and our, uh, our interest in looking into this further. And if you could scroll down. And Alex responds, thanks. I had an initial chat with my boss and he's supportive, but wants to wait a day or two. There's a danger that if we come down too hard, they might push out the crazies. And then the response, I think that's fair. Apparently Global and others are working on stories. Maybe see how those land. So when I show you this and I, I the, after this, the exact same sort of narrative came out from the federal government following these suggestions from their staff. Is that misinformation? I'm sorry, I can't really comment. There's just not enough context to know how, who these people are, how, what they represent, what information or, or influence they have. Right. Does the government realize how dangerous and deeply irresponsible its strategy was? The Honourable Minister of Public Safety, Mr. Speaker, we invoked the Emergencies Act because this was an unprecedented, unprecedented situation. It was dangerous for workers, for families, for youth, and that is why we worked together with police services. It was a necessary decision, and now we're going to collaborate with the Commission because Transparency is an important component of this exercise. Now, thank you. The Honourable Member for Rivière du Nord, Mr. Speaker, do you know what the worst part is? When they saw the convoy of trucks driving towards Ottawa, they didn't plan anything to stop them from besieging the city. They didn't plan to get them out either. They developed a calm strategy to escalate the crisis because they thought they were scoring political points. Not only did they let the protesters take hold of the city of Ottawa, but then their strategy created more than three weeks of tension, Mr. Speaker. How can the minister justify his strategy to the people who were held captive in their own city? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, since the beginning of this illegal blockade, the government managed the resources and the RCMP to help the police force here in Ottawa and help other operations across the country. It was an unprecedented situation and the decision to invoke the Emergencies Act was one that was necessary to help Canadians who were impacted by this unprecedented situation.